Hello everyone and welcome to another video on my channel. This video is a Q&A video. I asked on Instagram uh, for questions and I got some. I've got them on my phone. So I'm going to be answering them right now. So someone asked me, do you regret taking a break from YouTube this year? Um, there is a part of me that says yes, uh, but a part of me says no because I I am a workaholic and I do overwork myself all the time and I had a lot of uni work to do. So before I started uni, I started thinking maybe I should do a monthly vlog on my channel. Uh, first thing is, I'd be pretty stressed in general if I was making a monthly vlog on my channel. 2020 monthly vlogs would be super boring. Um, I think as a New Zealander, my monthly vlogs would be quite interesting, but also I did think as we were getting closer to the first lockdown, um, that I was thinking of doing something called the Corona Diaries or the Corona Lockdown Diaries and that was filmed from the first day of when the University of Auckland had closed down. Um, yeah, so what happened was the university announced that um, we were closing due to the fact that COVID was starting to get out of hand in New Zealand so we just wanted to protect ourselves and so I started filming the day we were meant to start our teaching free and teaching online session but then I just lost interest in it and I was like this isn't gonna go too well to be honest. At the end of the day I'm grateful that I saved myself a whole lot of stress for uni work rather than uni and YouTube. Someone else asked me do you miss high school? It's a bit of a yes and no so I do definitely miss my teachers and my friends who I did have in high school. Um, some of which I have taken into uni with me, which is great. So I do definitely miss the social aspect of high school, and I do miss my friends and my teachers. My teachers were genuinely amazing, and I loved them. I also really loved my high school principal. She's just amazing. I loved her so much. She is such an energetic person. She's got a great philosophy on education. Um, I just really respect her. Do you prefer studying in lockdown or on campus? So I'm quite um, uh, I'm quite divided on this, honestly, because for lockdown, I loved the fact that I could save money on public transport because public transport is expensive, and I'm a student, so I don't have a lot of money. Um, I just saved a lot of time from getting to and from places. So rather than walking 15 minutes to get to my next class or five minutes, I could just walk less than a minute to get to um, my class if I needed to change from location from the dining table to my bedroom um, that's very quick and easy but I do definitely miss the social atmosphere of a university where I can actually feed off my fellow students see friends and actually talk to them face to face that's really important to me like actual connection rather than through zoom um, I also just loved being in the campus really um, and especially because I'm a first year so I didn't really get a first year experience um, you know, I treasure every moment I do have on uni, but um, when I'm on campus, I'm definitely a lot more motivated and I'll do a lot more work and I'll definitely be writing more for my essays. Someone asked me, what's a musical that you want to be in, but you know you can't be in it? The Wiz, hands down. So The Wiz is a retelling of The Wizard of Oz, but it's meant to have a full black cast. That doesn't scream me. <laughs> I, I really love the music and the storyline and it's quite pop based. It's more modern and it's got more contemporary issues which I do really like. Um, unfortunately the race is a big barrier for me but if The Wiz ever comes to Auckland I will definitely get my tickets to see it because I love it so much. Someone asked me if I think it's too late to improve my singing. My answer to that is no because I actually read a singing teacher's thesis on um, broken voices and developing voices um, and the singer in, uh, this singing teacher in particular works with people who haven't sung for ages and want to get back into it or just suddenly want to get into it when they're older and saying it is definitely possible it's just that different techniques and different training methods need to be used but also I read somewhere else because I'm quite envious of singers um, and I do want to get back into singing to better my voice that your voice does develop and get better around your 20s, which is quite close for me. There are definitely teachers out there who can train people who are more developed in their voices, who want to get into singing again, or want to really build up from what they've got from the past, from when they were younger, because I started singing lessons quite late in my life. I started when I was about 16, 
um, and I finished when I was 18 because of high school ending. Um, I really do miss singing, and I actually haven't sung for a lot of this year. Like, I only, I sang for the first time yesterday since, since the closing night of As You Like It 2020. Someone's literally asked me, is cereal soup? This is a friend of mine from uni that I've spoken to about what I've seen on social media about is cereal soup on Instagram. Um, there's only one answer to this question that I can provide. Is cereal soup? Are you all right? <laughs> Who the heck answered that? I mean, answer that. So show me. <laughs> as much as it's a very good question, I personally also kind of disagree. I don't have a reason. I'm the just going to disagree. Is, is the cereal soup? Of course it's not soup. Are you all right? For Christ's sake. That is my opinion on if cereal is soup. Of course it's not soup. Someone's asked me a really good juicy question and that was what was my response when Judith Collins said that media studies is useless. So if you don't know, Judith Collins is the leader of the opposition party, the Labour Party, who is now in government in New Zealand. And she made a ridiculous statement saying that the problem with NCA is that there are too many woke subjects. And she literally said woke subjects. Um, and labelling photography and media studies as some of those courses. As a communication student and someone who studied media in high school, I think it is quite a stupid statement, honestly, because first thing is you're losing voters. You know, you've already lost a whole lot of um, media studies and photography teachers, all those creative teachers. They're not going to want to vote for you if you've just said their courses are useless and rather than studying media studies I should be studying something like engineering. People like me should be studying engineering or technology. First thing is like part of communication is technology like comms 100 was communication technology and culture so we're learning about the more sociological side of technology but it's still like technology. You know I study media and communication because I'm interested in it. You know I get that it's a competitive industry and there aren't as many jobs as engineering, but I would very much rather study something I'm really interested in than something that I really just hate. You know, numbers don't click with me. I don't like numbers. I don't like math. I don't like science. Um, but when it comes to things like that are literacy based, you know, media studies and English and gender studies, I'm really, really fascinated by that. If I walk out of university with a degree that doesn't have as many job opportunities, but I loved it, at least I can say I spent years of my life studying for something that I genuinely liked, rather than leaving with an engineering degree that will get me a job, but I hated every moment of it. I think it's also really important to see the importance of the media. The media, especially within politics, is so important. So if the media is useless in Judith Collins's perspective. I'd really like to see how well National goes with no media. If Judith Collins genuinely believes that media is useless, let's take away all the media for the next election campaign for, for National. We'll see how well that goes. So let's take away all their billboards. Let's take down their website. They're not going to get a commercial. Let's take down their social media. They're not allowed to put pamphlets in our mailboxes. They can't call us. They can't be involved in the debates that get um, put onto the mainstream media. They can't have a YouTube channel. They can't advertise because advertising is media. Let's see how well National goes if we take away everything to do with media in terms of their election and see what happens. My friend asked me, are you finding a good balance between YouTube, social life and uni? My answer is somewhat, like, this year has been really difficult, so it's quite unfair to make a statement on that because of the constant going into lockdown. But um, I'm a workaholic, and since before I started uni, I've been a workaholic. I'm constantly um, working on my channel. The channel is a big thing for me, but also I love uni. I've, I've worked for 10 years to get into uni, and I am now here, and I do love what I'm studying. Um... And I, I do overwork, I'm not going to lie. But when I do get the chance, I do try to see people when I can. I'll be able to make a more logical and more critical response next year. 
if there is no lockdown. <laughs> the same person asked me what's up next for you um, when it comes to the acting world. So I'm currently working on A Christmas Carol, which is done by Foolish Wit Theatre, but once that closes, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, attending auditions is what I'm going to be doing and try and find something new to work on as an actor. Otherwise, I'm just working on my degree. Someone asked me what my thoughts are on typecasting. So personally, I have nothing against typecasting. Um, when we look at the golden age of Hollywood, which was around the time of Marilyn Monroe, there was a lot of typecasting um, because of contracts. But we can really see at that time period of Hollywood and performing arts industry that that was quite an effective way of casting. Um, people were cast in characters that they genuinely really suited. Um, and, you know, like, I have nothing against being typecast, you know, I'm typically cast as a comedic, nerdy, queer character, so it's something that is within that type of realm, so I'm always cast in a comedic role, I'm always cast in a nerdy, although Dogberry did happen, which is comedic, um, or a queer kind of character, LeBeau from 2018, but, you know, if I was doing a production, you know, I can't really be this very old man, because I'm 19, I can't be a an old man, when you look at me, um, especially if I'm a, a little older, when I've got a bit more age on me, um, would you be able to see me as a lawyer? Would you be able to see me as a doctor character? Or would you see me as a homeless person? Would you see me as someone who is struggling? Would you see me as someone who is politically active in my characters? Um, right now, I'm always going to be typecast as like a student if I'm in a TV show or something, like an, a teenager. Um, and I have nothing against that. You know, what, what we've got to remember is that acting is also heavily based on how you look. You know, we'll look at characters now where we don't have as much typecasting as what we did used to have, and we have characters where we, we have performers that we see as certain characters and we're like, this is not your job. Like, I, I see some movies and TV shows where I see an actor or an actress that I've seen in other projects before and I'm like, I really like you as this role, but this project I'm seeing you as right now, it's just not for you. I'm always the comedic character who could either be nerdy or or queer, um, and that is my kind of character. Um, you know, I'm quite a bland person in reality, and I'm, but I do have that energy when I'm at work that um, suits comedic. And I also have that voice of a comedic character. I, I'm short, so it's easy to po point fun of me for my height. Um, but, you know, my voice can easily be altered for comedic issues. My voice, quite a comedic kind of voice, but also my f I've got that kind of face that you can really make fun of. And that's why I think typecasting does work. Um, you know, there are some characters that I've been offered that I'm like, that's not my typical character. Like, you don't cast someone who's typically in a production like, a deep, dark tragedy suddenly into someone who is a lover. You know, they're not a lover normally on stage, so suddenly to throw them into the deep end, it's really difficult. We can see that typecasting has worked historically within cinema and the performing arts, so it would be nice to see a certain degree of that come back. I will put in the effort to make the character reality. It's just that if it's not a comedic role, if it's not nerdy, Sometimes, Dogberry was really difficult, but if it's not a nerdy or queer character, then it can be quite difficult. Um, even if it is a dumb qu queer person, I'll be able to get the queer part down and I will work for the dumb side. I'm always, most of the time, typecast as a certain character. And that works for me. My thoughts on Judith Collins. So, honestly, I don't agree with a lot of what Judith Collins does say, um, and I don't agree with a lot of the policies she does but I still do have a lot of respect for her. You know, Judith Collins asks some really difficult questions in general, and I'm, I, I honestly listen to the questions she asks, and I'm like, that's a very valid question. I don't agree with you, but that's a very valid question. Some of her policies which she proposed to bring in, I actually supported. Some of them I just thought were quite extreme and a bit racist, not gonna lie, so I was like, yeah, you're definitely not for me. Um, but she definitely does ask really good questions and some of her policies genuinely are quite good. I honestly feel quite sorry for her with this last election due to the fact that she came in very late into the election campaign due to the fact that Todd Muller took over Simon Bridges and 
he he quit his job after a month because he couldn't handle the pressure. So then Judith Collins had to come in to save National. Um, so she definitely didn't have a very fair election campaign. But I've always thought since John Key stepped down from being uh, the National leader, I always thought from that point onwards, if anyone should be the leader for National, it should be Judith Collins because she always knows what she's talking about. She knows what she's doing. And she asks really difficult questions and she holds people accountable. I don't like a lot of the things she says. Some things that she says are quite racist, not gonna lie. But typically when the Labour government brings something in that she that doesn't go well, um, she'll say, well, here's the thing. They didn't think through this. They didn't think through that. And that's what's caused this, which is something that I really admired from Judith Collins. As much as I don't agree with her party and I don't agree with her a lot of the time, I would say that she would make a really good prime minister. Um, I don't like her. I don't like a lot of her policies. I, but I will give her the credit that she would make a good Prime Minister. She'd be really hard to get things done with because um, she'd have a zero tolerance for nonsense, really. She's the one that's really made me be quite critical with the 2020 election with New Zealand politics. She's actually made me um, start thinking, what's wrong with the party I support? Um, what don't they do that... I wish they did. What are they doing now that I actually don't like? Um, but also, what does the opposition do that I actually like? She started, she made me start to think that way. So someone's asked me a really generic question, and um, it is, if you could be any animal, what would it be? I'd be a dog, because I'm an attention whore. Well, not an attention whore, but I do require a bit of attention, and I, I do have a lot of love to give. I do like cuddling up to people that are okay with cuddles and that I'm close to. Some people have asked me questions that go well together, so I've just put these two questions together. What has been the best part of 2020 and what are you grateful for from 2020? So honestly, the best part of 2020 was the fact that I got accepted into uni. That was something, you know, I got accepted into my first choice university. My The degree that I've wanted for 10 years is something that has really been good for me. It helped me out throughout this year. It was really difficult this year. Um, I'm really grateful that we do have a government that put public health first before the economy so that way we got into lockdown really quickly, we had a really strict lockdown really quickly and that has allowed us to have our freedom back. Going into level one in general was quite a thing that I'm grateful for from 2020, that meant a lot to me. Um, knowing that we had eliminated COVID-19 twice this year um, just really meant the world to me. Even though the government really annoys me with um, the fact that they say we will be testing people who work at the border, people in managed isolation will be tested for COVID-19, and the fact that that didn't happen, that really bugged me, and it still bugs me now that this could be going on and we just don't know. Um, the fact that that has happened really did annoy me, but I'm really grateful that we did value public health first rather than the economy because we can see what's happened in the in Europe, I was about to say the UK, but just Europe in general, the US, um, Japan, how they've put the economy before public health, and how well that has gone, not very well at all. I'm grateful for my friends that I did bring into 2020, um, from high school and school before that, I'm really grateful for them, for being there to support me. I'm also really grateful for my friends that I met at uni, um, they are just over the moon, they make me motivated, but also we've been there during the lockdowns and everything, just chatting things through, um, you know, I'm really just grateful that I met them in general, like, the friends that I've made at uni are amazing. I'm grateful for the theatre community, um, especially because I did work in As You Like It and Brainstorm, so two shows at once earlier this year. I'm really grateful for them because they've um, given me a sense of belonging throughout my entire life. You know, I don't feel alone with the theatre community. And so, final question of the Q&A is, what do you want uh, 2021 to bring, and what's something that I'm looking forward to for 2021? What am I looking forward to? So the potential of a COVID vaccine is something I'm really, really excited for. Theatre properly opening again this coming year will be really exciting. So 2021, you'd hope more projects come about, so there are more auditions, but more importantly with the academia side, I'm really excited to be more specialised at uni. Thank you very much for watching this video. Um, if you want uh, to find out when my next Q&A is, follow my Instagram, Tomoki underscore Vincent. Um, leave a like if you enjoyed it, comment something down below, subscribe if you haven't, because I make a new video every week, and I hope to see you in another video.